going to be reading from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. And so please hear what God's Spirit is saying to you. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Here ends the reading of the words that give us insight on God. And may God grant us the wisdom and courage for interpretation. Alleluia, 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 glory and love and praise to God. 
Thanks, Gary. It's good to see you. Gary and I usually see each other every day, and for the past four months we haven't, and so it, it is good to see you. And uh, Amani, I want to say a special word of thanks to you for coming in today and doing that. You know, that's something that's not easy to do whenever you're in a room full of people. And whenever you're singing just to cameras at the back of the room, that takes an incredible amount of courage. So thank you for sharing your gift with us. Friends, will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we ask that you might help us to plant spiritual seeds that might grow into plants of your incredible love for us, of your radical hospitality, of your unconditioned welcome. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you and acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I was active in church growing up, and whenever I was a teenager, every year our youth group would go on a youth work trip. And I looked forward to these trips year-round, because when summer came, I knew we would be going somewhere exciting. We would almost always go to a large city, and whenever I would see the city skyline, my heart would start to beat a little bit faster because I knew I was in for an adventure. I would eat good food, I would go to new places, I would probably get to go to a theme park, and I guess we would do some mission work too, but honestly, that was not my highest priority. Well, one summer, instead of going to an urban center, we decided we would go to northern Iowa. Now, there's nothing wrong with northern Iowa. It's just that it's a whole lot like southwest Missouri. We were going to a Christian camp on Lake Okaboji. We weren't going to be participating in any of the activities at the camp. We were going there to do maintenance after the campers had left. And what I remember is the long drive from southwest Missouri to northern Iowa and going through a whole lot of fields. In Iowa, it was mostly corn fields, though some wheat fields. And then we got to the camp, and we saw our rough dwellings. If you know much about me at all, you know I'm not much of a camper. And I saw the places where we would be taking our cold showers. And then I got my assignment for the week. For the week, I would be pulling weeds. That is not exactly how I wanted to spend my summer. A week in northern Iowa where there wasn't anything to do, pulling weeds? So I went all around the camp pulling weeds, some even from amidst the crops. And the thing that I remember about that is that it was monotonous and it was so hot. That was the first memory that came to my mind when I read this week's scripture lesson. This scripture lesson is one that is, again, about planting and harvesting. You may remember that last week we talked about planting seeds as well. And that's because over the past couple of weeks I've been following the Revised Common Lectionary, which is a a set of readings that sometimes preachers follow. And right now the Revised Common Lectionary is going through the Gospel of Matthew, and he's talking about planting. Remember, Jesus lived in in an agrarian society, and so... Parables about planting and harvesting and herding and about fishing were all things that would have been very relevant to the people that he was speaking to. So in today's scripture lesson, we find a parable that's not quite as well known as the parable we heard last week about the sower. It's often called the parable of the weeds. In the parable, there's a man who has land and he has sown wheat seeds good seeds that he's waiting to grow so that he can harvest. And as the plants begin to emerge, his servants come up to him and say, 
you know, there are an awful lot of weeds in the midst of that wheat. And he says, an enemy of mine has come along and has sown bad seeds. And they say, okay, well, do you want us to go and take the weeds out? And he says, no, no. If you take out the weeds, then it'll uproot the wheat as well. He says it's better to wait until the time of harvest and to let the wheat and the weeds be sorted then. Now, we don't get an immediate explanation for this, but if you keep on reading in the Gospel of Matthew in a few verses, the author of the Gospel explains what he thinks it means, and this is common in the Gospel of Matthew. We don't get explanations in all of the Gospels, particularly in the Gospel of Mark. A lot of times we'll just get the parable and that's it. But in the Gospel of Matthew, we do often get the author's interpretation of what this means. And here he says, this is about God sorting out the good from the bad later. I read this parable, the parable of the weeds this week, and I was thinking about pride. This is Pride Week. After all, it may not feel like it, but this is Pride Week. And I was thinking that, you know, since this congregation began participating in Pride in 1995, officially, I know some of you participated before that, but in 1995, we began officially participating in Pride. And I thought, what this congregation has been trying to do by participating in that event is to sow good seeds. The seeds of God's unconditional love, of God's radical welcome, God's incredible inclusivity. And that by participating in those events, those seeds might take root and grow. Now, from what I understand, whenever the congregation first began participating in Pride back in 1995, there were not a whole lot of religious communities taking part in that. And a lot of people wondered why a church would even be there. One thing that I'm very happy about is that the faith community in San Diego now has a very robust presence at Pride. There's a whole segment of San Diego Pride that's dedicated to religious communities. It's called Devout capital O-U-T, div out. And so faith communities are, are very active in Pride these days. In fact, the Pride kickoff event, the Interfaith Pride service on Wednesday, I hear had 20,000 views. So the faith community has become a very important part of Pride. But there are still folks who come up to the booth every year and are shocked to see that there is a church at Pride because they've never experienced a community that is truly welcoming, that is truly affirming. And it breaks my heart every time that there are folks who have never encountered a church that really affirms them for who they are. You know, this Sunday, Pride Sunday, is a Sunday where we usually have pretty low attendance in church. There are usually more people than there are in the sanctuary today, though. Uh, with COVID, we have fewer than 10 people here. But it's usually a pretty low attendance Sunday anyway. But it's not because it's unimportant. In fact, I like to say that we have three Holy Weeks here at University Christian Church. We have actual Holy Week, you know, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter. Uh, we have the week of the rummage sale. And then we have Pride Week. And usually, folks from this congregation are bustling all around Hillcrest during Pride. We have our big kickoff barbecue on Friday night. And then on Saturday morning, there's a staging area out in front of the church. And we have a hospitality booth. And people are in and out of the building all morning. And then we have a, a Pride contingent in the parade. Last year, we won first place for our contingent. We were lo really looking forward to being out and, and doing that again this year. And then we have a booth at Balboa Park from early Saturday morning until late on Sunday. And 
a lot of times people are out at the booth on Sunday morning or are exhausted from being out on Friday and Saturday. And so a lot of times people aren't in church on Sunday morning for pride worship because they've been out doing ministry in the community. And it's a beautiful thing. I do miss that this year, but one thing that I really miss is standing at the Pride booth. And a lot of people come up to the Pride booth and they come and they'll spin the prize wheel and they'll take one of the freebies we give away, one of the fun things we have at the booth. Or they might come and take a selfie with Jesus. We have a cardboard cutout of Jesus that a lot of people will come and take a selfie with. Or they'll come and use our charging station. Or they'll come and they'll get a bottle of water or, or a snack or something like that. Or come just to chat and have a laugh. But some folks come up and they say, why is a church here? And they really want to know why we're there. And we get to minister that, that radical message of, of love and inclusion and talk about the kind of faith community this is and how we believe we are living into the gospel call. Now, some of those folks will never, ever step foot in University Christian Church. Some folks don't even live here, and they might not ever click on the live stream, but they have heard that they are loved by God, and they have seen that there is at least one faith community that cares about them as they are. And you know, a lot of folks then will take a, a little card or a little brochure or a bracelet that has our web address on it or something like that, and they'll hang on to it. And I have heard several people come out the door of the church and say, you know, I came by your booth at Pride years ago. And I haven't wanted anything to do with religion in a long time. But I woke up this morning and I saw the card and here I am. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. And it occurs to me that unfortunately too many religious communities plant bad seeds. They, they plant seeds of rigid religion, of, of bad theology. They, they plant seeds that make people question their self-worth. And those seeds grow up to be weeds in the soul. And a lot of times when you pluck out those weeds, it takes whatever roots of faith might have been there too, because they seem inseparable, you know? Religion with all these rules and, and faith. And yet, whenever people begin to pluck out those weeds, we've planted seeds that are good, seeds that can grow into a real crop of self-love, of radical inclusion, of God's incredible hospitality. And one of the things that I admire most about all of you in this congregation is that you're not just a congregation that, you know, spreads out these good seeds, but you're a congregation that tends for the ground and ensures that those spiritual seeds grow. Thank you for being that kind of congregation. During this year, whenever we are doing most things digitally, I hope that we are still able to plant some good seeds and that they might grow. May it be so. Amen.